Blockchain has been around long enough to have moved on third generation set of protocols. We launched the first second generation blockchain. The different generations of cryptocurrencies. Uh, third generation crypto. Today I'm going to talk about crypto generations. You're watching history be made. Bitcoin is now up to $111. It's an all-time high and it's continuing to rise. I've seen it break uh, three times today. It went up to 110 and this is the highest that it's been. It's ridiculous. Everything began with Bitcoin. First global decentralized peer-to-peer -peer trustless electronic transfer of value which started a whole new asset class even though so far crypto behaved like stocks. It was so far always very correlated to the stocks. However, Bitcoin and its forks are the first generation of crypto projects. Decentralized applications have been becoming more and more important in the past 10 years and have the benefits of massively reducing costs and barriers to entry, removing single points of failure, preventing censorship, and ensuring transparency and trust between all the parties involved in an interaction. On top of what Bitcoin could already do, the second generation added smart contracts, which allowed people to build things on the ledger. Cryptocurrencies were no longer currencies and became platforms for making decentralized applications dApps. One example of such a dApp that we all know very well is USDT. Smart contracts introduced the blockchain projects to a new dimension of utility, which is endless really. I think it's a new internet actually which is what we call Web 3.0, internet working fully without centralized third parties. Although not all platforms out there are Web 3.0 compliant. Always mind that the metadata has to be included directly into the chain if you want to talk about Web 3.0. We're starting to enter into a new realm. We're going into the third generation. Charles Hoskinson was the first to start talking about the third generation of crypto projects. His motivation is rather obvious. He is the founder of one aspiring third generation crypto project, Cardano. I highly suggest you to have a look at my review of Cardano, where I talk about the project and Charles himself in depth. So what revolution has the third generation brought? It brought cross-chain interoperability without bridges and on-chain governance, which is something the first and the second generations lack. Hello forks and hello forks of the forks and hello forks of the forks of the forks. Well, anyway, there are more arguments about what the third generation brought on the table. For instance, scaling. Third generation is all about three topics. One is scalability. However, I disagree. As almost all of the third generation projects need layer two scaling solutions to scale, which is not true scaling. These solutions bring way more trouble than they solve. They add complexity, they decrease significantly the security, and they are centralized. These solutions are not solutions in my opinion, and so I think the only way how to scale is to have scaling built directly to the layer one. Understanding the Nano Project. The first is that it is what I would call a pure cryptocurrency. I mean that it is seeking to serve as a form of money. Nano's big selling point is that its transactions are fast and free. And when I say free, I mean completely free. There are no transaction fees for using the Nano network. Nano achieves these outcomes by the implementation of a combination of innovative technologies. In a nutshell, rather than having a single public blockchain with all transactions recorded on this one chain, each Nano account holder has their own blockchain which records all the transactions performed by that user. And that's why I'm going to talk to you about the fourth and fifth generation crypto projects now. 
There is not yet public unilateral consensus about what 4th and 5th generation is. There is, however, lots of marketing attempts to convince the public that we are already there, we are 5th generation. I'm afraid this don't make them to be the 5th generation. Well, unless they have Charles Hoskinson, which they don't. There are also a number of arguments um, about what may be the 5th generation project such as completely AI-controlled consensus. The argumentation that I personally like the most is that the 5th gen projects rethought the very fundamentals on which all previous generations have been building. The very concept of a blockchain itself. Blockchain is exactly what you hear it is, the chain of blocks. The fourth and the fifth generation projects think outside the box and are no longer blockchains. There are, for instance, DAGs directed acyclic graphs, or, for instance, parallel sharding projects, kind of form of DAX, but not really DAX. Like Radix, uh, I highly recommend you to watch my popular review of Radix from May. The difference between the fourth and fifth generation is the introduction of smart contracts. In other words, the fourth gen projects are the projects that are no longer a blockchain, and don't have a smart contracts, and the fifth gen projects are no longer the blockchain and have smart contracts. So which projects belong to the fourth and the fifth gen? For instance, Nano is a fourth generation. It has zero fees, near instant finality, and I believe it is actually the best cryptocurrency in the world, or one of them at least. And the fifth gen crypto projects are, for instance, Hedder, Hashgraph, Phantom, Radix, Koti, or even Gbyte and IOTA, the oldest DAX that we know. The third gen crypto concept was introduced by no other than the guru of marketeering, Charles Hoskinson, whereas the fourth and the fifth generation a concept that I've just mentioned was introduced by, um, well, me. So it's very difficult to say if <laughs> this concept is actually going to be accepted by the public unilateral consensus. I believe, however, that non-blockchain projects bring not only higher security, faster finality, but also lots of fancy stuff but most of all, they bring a true scaling built into the layer one. For that alone, they do deserve to be called the next generation crypto projects.